initiating moisture. What's up, pussy boys and pussy girls? You're watching Moist Meter, your one-stop shop for reviews that put video games and movies on a scale that tell you how moist the product is. Why waste your time with dry shit when you can get with wet shit? Today's Moist Meter review is for Persona 5 for the PS4. This is the fifth entry into the beloved Persona franchise. I don't mean to spoil that for anyone, but I think the 5 in the title kind of gives that shit away. It's developed by P Studio and Atlas. It's a turn-based JRPG slash social simulator. So this is great for people out there that want to do fun things with fun friends but don't want to go outside to make fun friends or do fun things. You can make fun friends and do fun things from the comfort of your own home on this game with people that don't actually exist. Now there's really no carryover with the previous personas into this game so anyone can pick up and play this game and not be lost as to what's going on. And just like I did with Ghost in the Shell, I'm not going to be comparing this game Game to the other ones, I'm just going to review this as a completely standalone experience. So with that out of the way, let's get into my favorite part about the game, which is the graphics, the visual style, basically everything this game puts in front of your fucking face, and it's beautiful. This game is like an exquisite dish of fettuccine alfredo that I just want to dunk my head into and never take my head out, I just want to live in that fettuccine alfredo universe. This game is just so fucking beautiful. The characters, the environments, the anime cutscenes that are sprinkled in there, all of it just absolutely gorgeous. However, I can acknowledge that the art direction in this game won't be everyone's cup of cum. I know a lot of people will be disappointed with the cartoony comic book vibe this game gives off, but for me, it tickles my butthole in a way that just makes me really happy. The whole city just looks alive, there's always some shit going on, diving into dungeons looks great, fighting looks great, doing an all out attack and then watching the enemy get fucking spaghettified in the vortex of turboness you unleash is always satisfying. I just really enjoyed everything about the visual style. Now let's talk about the gameplay here. The game's gonna take you about 80 hours to complete, at bare minimum, there's just so much to do in this game, and it's divided into two big parts. Part of it is going to be dungeon crawling where you're diving into the hearts of corrupted adults to try and re make them realize how bad they are as people so that way they'll confess their crimes and be a better person. And then the other half is just being a good student and a good friend, balancing studying with hanging out with your bros to going on dates and still coming home and having time to masturbate. Juggling all of that I know doesn't sound like a fun gameplay mechanic, you know just being a good Japanese high school student. But trust me, it's actually a lot more fun than you think. Now for about the first 8 hours, the game was really boring to me. There wasn't a whole lot of combat, it was just me studying for school, learning about shit in class, being called a weird outsider. If I wanted that, I could just go outside right now myself. And I just wasn't really caring very much for any of the characters or the overall story going on. But the more I played the game, the more I started to care about these characters. Ah, oh, Ryuji, what's going on man? You gotta, you gotta do a little better in school. I'm rooting for you, you know? They started to become like my best fucking friends. I'd start blowing off my real life friends. Oh no, sorry guys, I can't go out to happy hour at the bar today. I've already made plans to go see a movie with Takamaki-san. No, I'm sorry guys, I can't go out tomorrow either. I got plans for the whole week. I've got my Japanese college entrance exams coming up. I also have part-time work at the beef bowl shop because my proficiency is kind of low and I need a little extra money. Really, I just got a lot going on guys. I'll be seeing you in a couple weeks when I finally beat this fucking game. You just get lost in the world, really. It does grow on you, it does become a lot of fun, there's so much to do, batting cages, working a part-time job, meeting people, building these relationships with the characters so that way you get some better stat bonuses and some better abilities, and it's just a whole lot of fun. But the best part about the game is definitely the dungeon crawling and the combat. I'm a big fan of turn-based combat, I always have been, and they do, they do a really good job in this game. You get to fight with personas that have a little special abilities to them. You can also mix and match other personas, combine them and make better ones and capture new ones. When you defeat an enemy, you can sometimes hold them up for extra money or items or even capture them like a really shitty and very kind of nice kidnapper. And it's really just a lot of fun. The gameplay in this game, both the social simulation aspect and the actual doing shit aspect, combat aspect, is fucking beautifully blended. It's great. I enjoyed both very, very much. Now the next big thing I want to talk about is the story here. I'm going to say I didn't feel the overall story was that interesting. It wasn't bad by any stretch of imagination, but it wasn't amazing either. It was good, 
it got the it got everything going. I got to meet a lot of cool people and everything, but I don't think the overall thing the overall plot that drove the main story was that great. Although I did like it, I'm just not going to say it's mind blowing or anything superb. But what I did find to be the strongest part about the game was the writing. All of the side stories, all of the characters were so well written. All of the extra things you could learn from just overhearing conversations or working or meeting someone that works in like the alleyway selling used condoms, all of that was beautiful. You could meet like a wizard operating the glory hole in your local bathroom and you might uncover some incredible conspiracy about the reptilian humanoids or something. There was just always, it felt like everything had a big purpose, everything just felt real. It felt like there were actual repercussions and actual things going on. And I guess the best thing to say about the writing is it makes you feel like you're in the world and that the people there exist and feel a certain way. The writing was just some of the best I think I've seen in a game in a long time. And to complement the great writing was some overall really good voice acting. There wasn't anything too overly bad or too overly cheesy or overdone. Everything just felt natural. It felt good. Felt like the characters' voices matched them, the performances were delivered great, you could feel the emotions. So, you left your hometown, and you're living here now, huh? No complaints there. Spot on, some solid shit. The only issue I took in the overall writing and everything was the main character doesn't talk, you tell him what options to choose from, but most of the options are pretty similar to each other. Doesn't really matter what you choose, you're gonna get the same response from the characters. But that's not my big issue, I just don't like how the character doesn't have a voice himself. He'll say one or two stray lines every now and then, but he doesn't talk to the other characters, and I just don't like that. That's a personal preference, I know a lot of JRPGs do that with the main character, but I'm just not a fan of that. He just reminds me of myself when I was at a really awkward stage in my life where I thought being mysterious and not talking a whole lot to people was cool, and I'd want to carry around a deck of cards so I could spontaneously do magic tricks to impress girls and get their phone number. Really dark period in my life, and this is just what it reminds me of. He's just a silent protagonist who doesn't say anything to anyone, except for the times where you're given three pretty shitty dialogue options. On to the next thing. The soundtrack. The soundtrack was solid. It was good. A lot of smooth jazz, some little rock orchestra. It never really got boring or annoying. Never got tired of it. Not, this isn't saying that it's amazing. It wasn't anything to wiggle your finger about or do the Johnny Bravo monkey to, but it was good and people are going to like it. I thought there was really nothing wrong with it. The sound effects in the game were good. Some of the characters sounded very similar to each other, but with so many characters having voiced lines, it's no surprise. You can't exactly find 5,000 voice actors to do 10,000 lines. It's You're gonna get a lot of the same sounding shit because you're going to reuse voice actors to save some money to only read one or two lines in a different voice. But uh, one of the big complaints though for this department is I just didn't like how almost every single one of the corrupted adults sounded exactly the same. There's really no distinguishing between them because their voices were almost exactly the same because they used the same effect. But that's not a big deal. I don't think it makes the game unplayable or unenjoyable. I'm not going to dock 70 points off of the moist meter for this one. I'm not going to say this game has psoriasis just because a lot of the villains and a lot of the characters sound exactly the same. Now overall, I think this game is absolutely great. But it is a very slow moving game, a slow build up. It takes a while to cream pie on your face and really blossom into something beautiful. You have to commit at least 8 to 12 hours to really start caring and start understanding where this game is going and also the things to do. And really just grasp the scope of this game and how much shit there is to discover and learn about. This is a game that has a good story to tell with great characters, great writing and just so much shit to do, and you can just get lost in the world. Fans of the previous Persona games are gonna love this game because it's all of those games, but much better. It's much better execution, just everything is a lot better. Combat, dungeons, all of it. So if you like the other Persona games, you'll love this one. But for people that aren't familiar with the Persona series or any of those games, I think most people will enjoy this if they give it a chance, if they commit quite a bit of time to it. But I understand not many people will want to do that. And for people that don't want to spend 12 hours before they really start to care about a game, this isn't a game I would recommend to you. But for someone that doesn't mind a slow moving game, a slow build up of a game, this is definitely one you'll want to check out. For $60 you can get 80, 80 to 150 hours of gameplay here, I've put 90 some into it myself. 
it's just an enjoyable experience overall. Now get your umbrellas out, because it's raining moisture up in this bitch. I'm going to slap this bad boy on the moist meter at about an 85%. It's where I'm going to clock it at. I enjoyed every minute of this game, pretty much. I didn't just play as Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon. I didn't just play as this magical high school Japanese student. I became this high school magical Japanese flailing arm tube man guy. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. Be moist, be damp, be wet, but don't ever be dry. That's it. See ya. <laughs>